Okay, in this video we're going to talk about verifying trig identities. Um, this is part one of a couple of parts, I guess. Um, and anytime you're going to verify identities, if you don't know these fundamental identities, you're going to have a rough time. So there's three reciprocal identities. So for example, cosecant equals one over sine. It's also um, important to realize that sine is equal to one over cosecant. And then you have the other two. Um, you have ratio identities. So tangent is sine over cosine. Cotangent is cosine over sine. Um, and then you have three Pythagorean identities. So sine squared plus cos cosine squared equals one is the most famous. And then tan squared plus one is secant squared. One plus cotan squared is cosecant squared. So if you don't know those, uh, you're going to have a very rough time. So make sure you have those memorized. And then once you know those, um, there's a couple strategies that I use. So um, in this video, we're going to talk primarily about two of them. But in general, there are eight. There's actually kind of a ninth, but I'm not going to get into it in this video. Um, so copy the question correctly, that's the biggest mistake I see people make. Um, work on the more complicated side, which is kind of subjective, but usually there's an obvious choice for that. Um, break up fractions or add and subtract fractions, depending on what's happening. So we're either going to break them up or we're going to combine fractions. Uh, try distributing or try factoring, so they kind of come in pairs. Um, multiply by a clever form of one, we're not going to do that in this video, but that's a very important strategy. And then... Um, Convert everything to sines and cosines and just uh, go crazy with the algebra. That's kind of a last-ditch effort. Sometimes you can't avoid it. So in this video, I'm going to talk primarily about breaking up fractions and adding and subtracting fractions. But of course, you can't really um, just talk about those. Like The other ones are going to come up. So let's uh, look at some examples. So the first one, we have cosecant minus sine all over sine times cosecant is equal to cosecant minus sine. So when you're verifying identities, you never want to cross the equal sign, like your inclination might be to just cross multiply here. You're not allowed to do that with identities. So we have to change one side into the other side. I would say the more complicated side is the left-hand side, because in general, it's easier to turn division um, or multiplication into addition and subtraction than it is to go the other way. So um, I see this subtraction in a fraction, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this up into two fractions. So that'll give me cosecant over the denominator and then minus sine over the denominator. And to avoid accidentally cross-multiplying, I don't even write the right-hand side again until the very last step. So I just put an equal sign there. And then here I have two fractions. I can actually clean them up. So in, in this left fraction, I see cosecant over cosecant. So that's just 1 over sine. And then minus, and then here I have sine over sine, so I'm going to uh, simplify that, get 1 over cosecant. And then this equals, if you look, these are the ratio identities. Uh, no, they're not. They're the reciprocal identities. So I have reciprocal, so 1 over sine I know is cosecant. And then minus 1 over cosecant I know is sine. And that is the original. So I'm going to say equals, and then just write the original right-hand side. And then usually to show that you're done, you would box your answer, but it doesn't make sense to box this because literally everything we did is the solution to the problem. So instead, what I do is a little box there. Okay, so that's one example. Let's take a look at another one. So in that problem, we had one fraction. We broke it up into two and went from there. In this example, we actually have two fractions. Um, so we have sine over one minus cosine plus one minus cosine over sine is equal to two cosecant of x. So it's going to be much easier to turn the left into the right. I think everyone can agree with that. Um, so I see two fractions. Um, the only thing I'm thinking here is let's get a common denominator and see what happens. So to do that, I'm going to need to multiply the left-hand fraction by sine over sine. So we get this. And then it's going to be plus, I need to multiply the right-hand fraction by 1 minus cosine over 1 minus cosine. So we get this. So that's the original, right? And then 1 minus cosine over 1 minus cosine. And then I'm just going to write equals to avoid um, any accidental cross-multiplication. And now I'm going to just kind of like simplify. So this will be sine squared and then plus the quantity 1 minus cosine squared. When you're verifying identities, you don't want to like expand too soon. Um, so for example, I'm not expanding the denominator at all um, because I think that Usually, if you expand, you just end up having a factor anyway. But in this case, not expanding the 1 minus cosine squared 
didn't really benefit me. So now I'm going to expand that because it's really the only thing I have left to do. So sine squared plus, so if I expand this, I'm going to get 1, then minus 2 cosine, right, multiply them together times 2, and then plus cosine squared, and then all over the denominator. And then if you look carefully at the numerator, you see sine squared and cosine squared. Anytime those are together, you can combine those into 1 because of the Pythagorean identity. So that's going to give me 1 plus 1 is 2, minus 2 cosine, all over the denominator. We have this. That numerator actually factors. So I'm going to show it, even though you, know, you might jump to the answer at this point. Over the denominator. So I can now cancel my 1 minus cosine over 1 minus cosine. So I have 2 over sine, and then 2 over sine, well, 1 over sine is cosecant, so this is just 2 cosecant, and we're done with that one. So I'm going to do one more example, um, and it's cosine over 1 plus sine plus tangent is equal to secant. So again, the left-hand side looks more complicated, so I'm going to work on that, but there's nothing really obvious to do. Um, I see one fraction, it'd be nice if I had two, so I'm going to use the ratio identity on tangent to rewrite it as sine over cosine. So, cosine over 1 plus sine, plus tangent I know is sine over cosine by the ratio identity. Just put an equal sign. Um, now I have two fractions, the only thing I can think to do is to add them, so I need a common denominator. So that's going to be, multiply the first fraction by cosine over cosine, the second fraction by 1 plus sine over 1 plus sine. So in this one I'm showing more what I would actually do, I'm not showing all the steps. Um, and then that's all over 1 plus sine times cosine. Um, here I'm going to distribute in the numerator, so equals, so I have cosine squared plus sine. So if you've been following along, you see I'm doing a lot of things that I did in a previous example in this example, and that's what happens. The more you do, um, the easier they get because you just do the same thing over and over. So this would be all over the original denominator. And I see sine squared plus cosine squared, which I know is 1. So I'm going to have 1 plus sine of x over the denominator. And I can cancel the 1 plus sine of x to give me 1 over cosine of x. And that's one of the reciprocal identities, which is secant of x. And that's actually what I was supposed to prove that this thing equaled. So we're done. Alright, so those are the identities you need to know, the strategies that I like to use, and then a bunch of examples about two of the strategies, and I'll be back in another video to talk about the other strategies. Hope this was helpful. Good luck.